Three cousins' bodies identified within weeks of one another. Family of man who was killed in Toronto cannot get visas for his funeral. Liquor store workers in Ontario are set to strike. Thailand legalizes gay marriage. Nine dead in hospital fire in northern Iran. And almost 600 people died during Hajj this year. Good morning. It's Wednesday, June 19th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. First, we start in Dawson Creek, British Columbia, where two Cree women have been found dead just weeks apart. The women were cousins who the family said did not travel in the same social circles. Darylin Supernaut's remains were identified Tuesday. She'd been missing since March 15th, 2023, and was 29 years old. Her cousin, Renee Didier, went missing on December 2nd, 2023, and her remains were found on May 18th. Andrew Krajata from CBC News reports that there were two other people who went missing from Dawson Creek in 2023. There are just 12,000 people who live there. Krajata makes the note that the RCMP was focused on gang violence and extra help was sent in from the province's gang police team. No report on whether or not resources were poured in to support murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls as well. Next to Toronto, where Calvi Leon at the Toronto Star has a devastating story about a man who came to Canada with nothing, started to build a life for himself, and was tragically killed when he was caught in the middle of gunfire. And his family has been fighting like crazy to try and get to Canada to say goodbye. But because it is, after all, Canada, trying to get to Canada to say goodbye has been a nightmare. The family has not yet been able to do it. The man was Adu Boake. He was from Ghana, where he had a wife and four kids. In Toronto, he hoped to be able to make more money than he could in Ghana and send that money back to his family. Within months, he got a job in a grocery warehouse in Vaughan, and then he was killed near a bus stop in late February. His body is still in the custody of a funeral home, which the family pays $50 per day for, and his family has not been able to get visas to come to Canada and honor him. It's way too expensive for them to repatriate his body to Ghana, and so they've been fighting to be able to attend a funeral here. The family has had the help of local politicians and is paying for an immigration lawyer. Plus, the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Canada have all helped to try and get the visas sped up. And yet, nothing. There are nine family members trying to come to Canada to pay their last respects. That includes his children, who are between the ages of 2 and 17. There have been lost documents, incompetence, requests for them to travel to Accra to get things sorted out. And then, from the Ministry of Immigration and Refugees in Canada, a promise to only allow his wife and children to come, something that the family calls unacceptable because, well, it is. Anyone who is from Ghana who wants to enter Canada needs to have a temporary resident visa because we only want certain kinds of people to tour Canada, see Niagara Falls and that kind of thing. There is a GoFundMe that has been set up to help the family with their costs that you can find if you search ADU, that's A-D-U, Boaki's name, B-O-A-K-Y-E. No one has been arrested in his murder. Let's stay in Ontario now for news from CTV's Hannah Alberga. Liquor store workers are ready to strike. 10,000 workers at the LCBO will be in a legal strike position as of July 5th at midnight. If you're wondering why July 5th, well, Colleen McLeod from the Liquor Board Employee Division Bargaining Team of OPSU said that it was to make sure that there would be no disruption in the flow of booze for the July 1st long weekend. 86% of employees voted at 97% in favor of going on strike. The workers' main concern is that the Ford government will privatize the LCBO. The company brings billions of dollars into Ontario's coffers each year and provides stable and good jobs for people all over the province. The workers are also fighting for more full-time positions and a wage bump. 
Now to international news, and first we'll start with good news in Thailand. Thailand will be the first country in Southeast Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. And in the broader region, it will be the third country in Asia to do so, after Taiwan and Nepal. Gendered terms in marriage policy will be rendered gender neutral, and queer couples will be given the same rights as heterosexual couples to leave inheritances to one another and access adoption rights. When the bill passed the country's lower house, just 10 of 410 politicians voted against it. Next to Iran, where a fire at the Qayyam hospital has killed nine patients. The hospital is located in Rasht, northern Iran. The people who died there were all in the hospital's intensive care unit. Al Jazeera is reporting that local media said the fire started underground in a room where the hospital's power generators were located. It isn't clear that it's related, but there have been reports that the power generators were being used after power had been cut to the hospital and the facility was using emergency power. It was likely to try and combat the scorching heat that is blanketing Iran right now. And finally, in news that I think will make those of us living through this heat wave right now feel far worse about things, 577 people who were doing this year's Hajj have died. 323 of these people at least were Egyptians, and they died from heat-related illness. The Guardian is reporting that more than 2,000 people are being treated for heat-related illness, though Saudi officials have not updated this number since Sunday. Last year, at least 240 people died during the Hajj, and most were Indonesians. On Monday, the temperature at Mecca's Grand Mosque reached 51.8 degrees Celsius. The Hajj has been increasingly dangerous due to these unbelievable temperatures. Some 1.8 million people took part in the Hajj this year. The ritual requires people to be outside for periods of time that can be hazardous in the extreme heat. Saudi officials have furnished the pilgrimage route with air-conditioned rooms, but many people who do the Hajj outside of the official channels don't get access to these places. It makes doing the Hajj much more dangerous. The Hajj is considered one of the five pillars of Islam, and Muslims are expected to try and do the Hajj at least once in their lifetimes. It's an important, holy experience, but also highlights just how dangerous extreme temperatures are becoming. Those are your headlines for Wednesday, June 19th. I'm Nora. You're listening to this podcast at sandynora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and anywhere you get your podcasts. I'm not kidding about this heat really messing with your brain and really messing with what you think is up and down. I hope that you're all able to stay cool. I don't have air conditioning, but I do live half underground, so I'm doing okay. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it. I, I guess I probably shouldn't think of like burning things down in this kind of extreme heat, but uh, kind of hard not to either. I guess we can maybe make a bit more heat if we can actually start turning things around. I'll talk to you tomorrow.